Hello, welcome to Redmen TV. My name's Dan Club, and I'm here from live inside the studio for our latest fan cam. I'm joined by Sparrow to the right of me. That guy there, probably the coolest looking guy we've ever had in this building. And I include myself in that. And I'm also joined by the big JC, Jamie, of course. These two wonderful individuals join me to watch the Reds pick up a crucial three points and a way win in that white kit. Can you believe your eyes? I certainly couldn't. Jamie, what do you make of it, mate? I thought we were pretty good. I thought um, there was some decent attacking play. There was a little bit where we were getting a bit bogged down, but it's a Moyes side away from home. He was putting 11 men behind the ball. Uh, Bright Sparks, I thought Jones was good. Again, I think he's proven that he can hold down a place in the team I thought Diaz was good when he came on mm -hmm. when they got Matip got man of the match and I was thinking Matip man of the yeah. match and actually he didn't really put a foot wrong and scored a goal so yeah you know decent all round performance I would say yeah it's a fascinating one, that actually, because Matip, a lot of me, Chris, and Paul spoke before before the game. When we see Matip was in the starting line, I think we all kind of went, not sure about him performing that Canate role because he hasn't quite got the pace. We even thought Joe Gomez might be better suited to it. But like Jay says, he ends up getting man the match, ends up getting the winner, Sparrow. But Matip was boss, wasn't he? He was, and it was understated. Um, and obviously, Jürgen's buzzword this last week seems to have been stable. And that's it. It was a really stable performance, especially from Matip in a season where stability has been the one thing we really lacked. Yeah. And yeah, the goal is just a cherry on top of the cake, isn't it? It's, uh, it wins us the match. It typifies everything. He's done his job just a little bit more. Mm. And that's it. It was very, as I say, it was stable. It was workmanlike from most of the team. Mm. And in a, in a performance where the job's done, that little bit more is what stood out yeah. and he's got he's got he's got the goal and that's in the end that little bit extra has been what's been the defining point in the whole game mm -hmm. yeah I, I can't i can't argue with it but until someone said it before i wouldn't have i wouldn't have i'm there going who's got man of the match no yeah. one stood out apart from maybe curtis mm -hmm. who seems to be growing into that he's kind of a genie when alden plus yeah. he doesn't lose the ball but he's a bit more dynamic the only other person that stood out is, is Matip today. Mm. So, yeah, out of those two, I wouldn't have given it to anyone else. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. He was brilliant. Like I say, he didn't put a foot wrong and he really he shut me up, to be honest with you, because he was brilliant. He was, and I didn't expect it from him. I was kind of starting to think his Liverpool career might be coming to a little bit of a damp squib of an end, actually. I thought he was just going to sort of fade away into the into the abyss and we might sell him in the summer. We're not really going to get the send-off he probably deserves, but tonight proves that he has still got something to offer. Um, you both mentioned Curtis Jones, James, which I'll come back to you on this one. I think, uh, similarly to Matip, I think a lot of people are questioning where the future lies for Curtis Jones just a matter of weeks ago. But I think we're now five consecutive starts into what has been a very good little run of displays and run of performances from him. Tonight was probably the pick of them for me. I think his use of the ball and also the stuff we don't really attribute to him in terms of the winning the ball back and sort of doing that defensive stuff. He had everything tonight, didn't he? And that was a... I'm reticent to say coming of age display, but that was a display to suggest, and we spoke about it earlier, it's like Jurgen Klopp's got a pot of money to spend this summer. Curtis Jones is going out there and saying, I don't care how much money you've got to spend, I'm a part of this, isn't he? Yeah, and I think he, he's always had that confidence in himself. He's not he's not gonna be um he's not gonna be bothered if we sign in the summer. Mm. It's almost yeah, he's he's his his performances are growing more mature. I think we're all you see him and it's like, I'll oh, just slam a 25 yarder in, but he's being asked to rein that in. He's yeah. he's always had he's always been good on the ball. Mm -hmm. Thought he was good. Even in the first five, ten minutes, some little bit of interplay with Robertson down the left hand side. I think I, I was I was surprised, maybe surprised to see him in the team because because his fitness has been that that dodgy all season. Mm -hmm. Um I thought oh, we'll give him a rest eventually. But he's uh, I'm really glad he's getting this run now. And um yeah, I think he's definitely proven that he belongs, at least in the squad, at least he should be one of the first options off the bench in midfield rather than the guy who plays in the third round of the FA Cup. He should be a really viable option for Liverpool, whoever we sign in the summer. Yeah. 
No, I make you absolutely right. And he's making himself that at the minute as well. And it, it, he's actually keeping Thiago out of the side right now because that's yeah. the role they're both sort of vying for. And whether it be fitness related with Thiago or not, Curtis Jones has got the shirt. And you've got to say, based on that performance tonight, he deserves it and he's sticking by it. So fair play to Klopp for having the faith and fair play for Curtis Jones to actually keep producing those performances. Before we come on to the final lad, Sparrow, I want to speak about one more person. And Jamie made a point earlier that I was making some incredibly interesting noises interesting, when yeah. Cody Gakpo did anything. I just love watching this lad play footy, quite frankly. I do. I think he's absolutely extraordinary. And I made the point that he hasn't had a preseason. He's coming to a side that's struggling. He is playing out of position, technically. He's learning on the job. And we, we spoke about Roberto Firmino and what he can offer in terms of his experience. I think that's priceless of what he's given the likes of Cody Gakpo. But he is taking that to a whole new level. I've said it before. He's got everything that Firmino has and potentially a little bit more because he's a little bit quicker, he's a bit bigger, he's a bit stronger. And I love Bobby Firmino, but Cody Gakpo, mate, his goal is brilliant. Speak about his goal, of course, but his all-round play, his intelligence, his use of the ball, he's phenomenal, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's uh, he's Bobby, but two stone heavier and half a foot taller. Yeah. He does everything, but with, again, the dynamism, the power... All, all the trickery is there. The football and intelligence is already there. And bear in mind, as as you said yourself, he's not at the pre-season. He's not settled into the team. He's essentially having the same impact this season that Diaz had last season. Mm. He's, re- he's revitalised. There's, there's competition. Everyone's... And he's, he's there's imagination yeah. coming in the front three. Whereas sometimes we've lacked that. Especially when Mo's having a game where, like today, it was always... None of the bounces went his way. Mm. And it must be frustrating for him because he's got all that ever than Mo is. Mm-hmm. We all know and we you can't say more about Mo than what we already have. But sometimes it's just not his day. Yeah. Today wasn't his day. And Gakpo just kind of, it's that that invention. Mm-hmm. And it, sometimes it looks like luck, but it's not because you can't be that lucky that often. No. He's that type of player where he just makes things happen. And it's great. We're, we're all there going, oh, that's lovely. Oh, again. Oh, Cody. Oh. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you'd, be, you'd be worried if you were in a bedroom with him. <laughs> Honestly, the noises we're making I about this, man. Oh. It's exciting, though. It is. It is. It's, lo- it's lovely to watch. And yeah. you imagine with a full pre-season under their belt yeah. and you've got Gakpo laying on passes to Diaz. Mm. And then even if Nunes is in there as well, it's yeah. going to be unreal. No, you're right. The, the, I'm not saying they're the new front three because you can't take Mo off that, out of that team. You can't. Not yet. But looking at him, you're going... There's not a, not a defense in the world is going to want to come up against any two of those three mm. with Mo's quality and his ability to just finish from anywhere at any time and change a game in a second. Mm. No one's no one's wanting to play against that. No, not not when they've had a full preseason because that's been our problem this season. No preseason and Diaz out, Gakpo not bedded in. It's all been a bit bit disjointed up front. Yeah, that goes away. Yeah, 100%. He's not the finished article yet, I think it's fair to say, but it's just exciting to see someone in what has been a bit of a shit show of a season so far for the Reds. And listen, we're ending well at this point. We could end up even better, who knows? But like I say, it hasn't been the season we all hoped. So to see someone like Gakpo come in and just be hit the ground running, essentially, he's had a couple of performances whereby you go, okay, hasn't really done a lot but there's something there for me and I'm really excited by it um, one final lad I want to talk about we can't really end the show without doing it it's Trent Alexander-Arnold again he is always a hot topic you can't like Drew Bellingham and transfers you can't have a show without mentioning him but this again tonight Jamie was another it was a very very impressive display in that new role of his wasn't it and listen we all kind of praised him during while we sat here saying how well he was getting back into that right back position as well because that's something we mustn't forget. Yes, his passing range was there. Yes, he was in midfield. Yes, he was anticipating, reading the play really well. And because of his defensive instincts, which do exist, by the way, he actually wins the ball up higher for us up the field than we were doing. But talk to me about Trent again tonight. Yeah, I thought he did well. I um, I like the... Uh, I like I like the new position. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was there were the only negatives were, but that these are negatives that existed when he was a pure right back, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. That that ball over the top again. Um, ben Rama was getting a bit of joy, but I actually thought he dealt with him really well on a few occasions. Even if it wasn't necessarily a clean tackle, it was just putting him off his stride or 
holding them off, holding them off until there were other people there. Yeah. I, I don't. Um, a lot of some good incisive passing. I wouldn't say he kind of like ran the show like the Leeds game, but um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing us going into next season with this. Hope it's something we continue doing. I don't necessarily well the old uh, the, the 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 Trent debate. I don't necessarily see him as a permanent central midfielder. I think he can do both things as long as that covers there. Yeah. Um, Matt, I thought Matip did really well in that, which, I, like you, I wasn't quite sure of that. No. But overall, yeah, b- very impressive again from him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I, I tend to agree with you in terms of the fact that I don't see him always playing this hybrid role. I think there will be games and moments in games where he does have to slot back in as a conventional right-back. I actually thought we'd see more of that tonight with it being Matip. But like you say, Matip actually covered pretty well. Anyway, lads, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll be back very shortly for some player ratings on the very same topic of the very same game. Paul is also doing his post-match stuff right now. We've got Chloe down in East London providing her reactions. Me and Chris will be on the instant match reaction a little bit later. And, of course, we've got the final word show tomorrow morning, which Jamie will be on with Abby and Steve Plunk, I believe. Uh, that's been a pleasure. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Each and every single month, you could be entered into a prize draw for, generally speaking, some signed Liverpool memorabilia. You just need to be a club legend at redmenplus.com. Honestly, we've given away some absolute belters over the last year, year and a half, and you could be the next winner.